I'm an American Indian, grew up on a reservation. I would say I'm Kuia Cupeño. I'm Native Hawaiian. I'm Chamorro. I am Navajo. I am a Mexican-American, um, Chicano, if you will, or, uh, you know, U.S.-born Hispanic. What we're trying to do is have individuals become engaged in science in a way that they could participate and ultimately become leaders in science, be the new discoverers and the new inventors. We're finding leaders that have been in the crowd but have not been able to stand out because they didn't have a community to connect with. I wanted to focus on, on being the person, the voice, to, to talk about the strength of the Native Hawaiian community and all the, all the science that we, we practice in our medicine. Those are the values I wanted to, to be able to do, and a doctorate degree allowed me to do that. We try to demystify what it means to go to graduate school and the fact that people just like them have done it and they've been successful at it, and that they're now here really trying to guide them and help them. When you're in a community that's family-oriented, your family doesn't even want to let you go. You don't want to go. In fact, all my cousins are still in Guam. And we become an extended family. We become the, you know, the family that we didn't have back at home to guide us. The best way that SACNAS reaches out to new students is through the network that it already has across the country and in Puerto Rico. And it does it through the student chapters or through one-on-one. -on -one. It is important to have a SACNAS chapter so we can outreach and send the message out to youths. In my community college, we, um, we did some, some activities like where we helped out at an elementary school to motivate some students to pursue a college. There's nothing like seeing the light in their eye, saying, oh, you know, I can go to college, you know, this is actually for me, this is something I can do in the future. The greatest impact that SACNAS could have in the near and future is in the pre-college level. That is where the largest growing number of students from our communities are at, and that is where we need to make absolutely sure that we develop the largest pool of potential future scientists. The pre-college program currently brings in teachers to our conference to provide them both access and networking to the scientific community, as well as to connect them to the resources available to them as teachers by providing pre-college teacher workshops, as well as professional development activities. The benefits for students of the, not only the SACNAS chapters, but the SACNAS conference, is the opportunity to come and see people that look like you, speak like you, feel like you about the sciences. You get a sense that you're not alone that there's a network of professionals there um, where a number of us have had to operate in isolation. Now they have the ability to be a family and really rally those resources, the past experiences. And this actually happens for all students. It's not just Latino or Native American students. SACNAS is very inclusive. We have 10% African American students who participate in our programs, about 4% who are Asian Americans, some students who are also Caucasian who find that we have a service for them. SACNAS is a transformative event for our students. It really is an opportunity for them to not only be valued as scientists, but to actually be able to see how their dreams can be achieved as scientific professionals. It's $25,000 scholarship for the first year in graduate school. Congratulations. One of the things that um, uh, a meeting like this provides for students and, and for, for others um, are, uh, are an array of wonderful speakers, scientists, um, who, are, who are role models. We have people from NASA, from other universities, from the community. These are world-class mathematicians coming to SACNAS to give their talks. I remember my first uh, SACNAS conference going to a scientific symposia where I saw, you know, a Mexican-American scientist presenting top-notch data, which I didn't think that we as Mexican-Americans could speak in such terms. Once they come to the conference, they are able to meet uh, recruiters from graduate schools, from the Harvards, the Princetons, to the UC systems. It gives them a chance to really have that one-on-one -on -one kind of cup of coffee conversation that you have with a faculty member. It's so important in, in their mentoring process. Students learn about what's out in the world for them and what opportunities there might be and, and what graduate school might be like. One of the key things about the conference is the students present their work. 
Um, let me tell you now that you'll be shocked at the level of students that you'll see. We have over 500 students presenting the research that they conduct either during the summer or throughout the academic year. And then at least two faculty members have the responsibility of both judging them for an award, but also providing important mentoring and feedback in terms of the research that they're conducting, how they're asking their questions, and how they're presenting as well. It's not just a celebration of the science and the mentoring, but it's a celebration of culture. We have a powwow that happens every year. Attending a powwow at a major scientific conference is absolutely amazing. Um, I don't, it it kind of brings a sense of home to the conference. They're so enthusiastic. If you've talked to any of them, you know that um, this is a milestone and it has a real impact on them and it hopefully will change their life forever. I think it's really important to break away and kind of just go off on your own and really take charge in and network by yourself um, so that you can establish those one-on-one -on -one contacts instead of as a group. The last time I came, I got an internship by talking to someone and I think it was a lot better being by myself because they really got to know who I was. That means a student should go up to the person who's giving the talk and say, I enjoyed your talk, I'm such and such from such and such, and say, can I have your email, will you send me some papers, here's my email, here's my card. You have to network, you know, that's really important. Everybody who's accepted to give a talk here is going to be receptive to students talking to them. Basically, experience everything. Don't miss out on any of the events. Go to all the um, dinners and the lectures. Just take advantage of all the symposiums and leadership conferences. Visit all of the exhibits because everyone that's here has information to, uh, to help you meet your goal. You never know what person you're going to meet at Sockness that's going to influence your life forever. I mean, I, would, I can name, oh, ten people I've met at Sockness who have been instrumental in changing the course of my career. So you can't come and watch. You have to come and say, I take part. I take part. It's about um, uh, opening doors and, and opening eyes. Um, for, for them. And it's also about opening eyes of the, uh, of, of the major scientific establishment, that there's some wonderful talent uh, in, in these uh, young people that are here, and uh, give them a chance and, and, and they will produce. If the United States is going to remain a leader in the sciences, and as the population becomes increasingly minority, we must have these individuals, the American Indians, Hispanics, the African Americans, you cannot tell where the talent is. Science would benefit by hiring people with different perspectives that do have different experiences. Scientific research is, is a human endeavor, and the uh, choices of topics that we research um, are, are based on our biases, uh, our, our beliefs, the, what we bring, um, our, our culture, our families. And so the kinds of problems that people put their talents to, to, to solving uh, depends a lot on their, their values. Sackness is the next generation. My husband always says, why don't you persuade the Indians they are warriors in another battle and that the battle is the sciences. We need new warriors. We need new people who actually go out there and uh, seek new opportunities that the community may not know will ultimately help them to. We simply have to train our people of all colors, all ethnicities, to be able to take the lead to not be afraid to grab a hold of opportunities. There's no other sackness. There isn't. There should be. But there is no other sackness out there. Um, there is no other organization that values the science and values the culture together. And that really does connect to the students and tries to see that they not only go to the next step, but that have a bigger vision, that have a vision of becoming leaders, um, that have a vision that uh, this will help them and it will help 
more people than just the individual. 